So you're starting the fall with building thinking classrooms, whether by choice or because you were told you had to, and you've got questions. Well, stick around and we'll talk about it. Hi, I'm Aaron Hayes. Welcome to Hayes' World of Math. This is season 32 for Mr. Hayes. Um, so yeah, I've been teaching for 32 years and it's been fun and I've gotten a lot of questions. Over the summer, I started getting more subscribers than I ever had before. And I looked, at, not that I've been looking a lot, but it's like I checked beginning of July. I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened? And all the trend, all everything's been running around has been primarily building thinking classroom stuff. So since I was in today, before school started to drop some stuff off, I would make a video addressing some of the questions that I got and hopefully give you a place where you can ask some more. Okay. So questions from the summer is where do I start? Why do I, Aaron, not do everything that's in the book, how the book says it? And also, what do you do about students who are up the board not doing stuff? And so I'll, hopefully this will address some of those types of questions. Obviously, like, subscribe, comment. If you have questions, throw them down below. I appreciate everybody who emailed me over the summer. Um, if you throw the comments down below, maybe we can start some discussion among us. We'll go from there. So, so here's some general information about building thinking classrooms. I'm going to suggest that you should try first semester. And if they don't work to your satisfaction, I will give you your money back. All right, first things first, okay? Getting your kids up at the board three times a week is obtainable, okay? Now, the hard part is, is the way that Peter talks about it, it's always building ideas, and I'm all for that. Doing that routinely three times a week can be tough. However, you can get the kids up at the board to do review exercises, to do an opener, to do all sorts of other things besides just trying to come up with the next step in math, okay? And why I'm asking you, telling you to do this is that it gets kids up at the board routinely so they can see what's going on. Building a routine has been very, very successful in my classroom. Last 10 or 15 years, I spend a good portion, two to three days of the first week, just building routines. This is what happens. You come in the door, there's papers down here where it says second hour, take one to your desk. Um, oh, you're turning stuff in, there's this bin for it here. Oh, guess what? I had a, one time I heard a class walking down the hall really, really loudly, and I shut the door and I turned to my class and I said, I'm happy to know that if we don't, if we ever have to go somewhere, you will not be like that class, okay? And just setting up a routine of how you do things works. And the same thing holds true for the vertical, non-permanent vertical services. Getting groups of three together, where they rotate around, and after every question you say, okay, pass the marker to the next person, so it's not just the one group doing it. And then that way you can just deal with the one group if you you know, keep your eyes on everybody. But that way you're not singling out one group with those information. You're just constantly telling and reinforcing everybody with it. And it's amazing how much just setting up that routine helps. Another thing that really, really helps, in addition to you being consistent with it, because I will tell you, if you only do it once or twice a unit, it is, you're going to have to go through the rules every single time about it. I would also suggest beginning of the year, you start something using non-curricular tasks. My boss suggested us, this to us eh, two or three years ago to do this the first couple of days of the year. I thought it was like, eh, okay, fine, I'll do it because I have to. It turns out it really, really works. Why? Because these non-curricular tasks are safe, unthreatening. You, the smartest kid in the room won't necessarily get them. So they're kind of math-related, but it's more a math puzzle. And because of that, since you've got kids working at the board, they will be able to interact, go back and forth, and... If you're wrong, every, honestly, everybody's going to be wrong at some point. Okay? So it's a good way in. And again, you're building a routine because it's hard to focus on, am I supposed to be writing stuff down or telling somebody to write something down when you're trying to figure out all the math? You're asking them to do two things. Learn how to work in a group at the board and learn some math. If I take the math out of it, they can focus on this. Okay? So there's that. So that's the first thing. Just commit to having the kids up at the board in some fashion, 10 minutes, three days a week, okay? You need to make building thinking classrooms your own. Could you do all 14 steps exactly how he says it? Yes. Are you going to have any joy in that? I doubt it. 
take what you can from each of the steps and work it into your learning style. We have some teachers here. I will have Caitlin on this here. Kate does an amazing job. She is also very high structure, which bless her, makes her a great team leader. But she also has everything out for her students and work, work, you know, walk through it so then that way they can do it most of the time. For me, I'm more informal in class in general. So I tend to do a couple of problems up on the board, walk around and be able to interact with my students that way. And then if I need to change it, I can with everybody all at once. Ironically, I think that's probably higher control than just letting kids work. But I find it works better for me. It's just like if you were to take a lesson from anybody on your curricular team, I would hope that if I walked into the four people on your curricular team all teaching the same lesson, every, the framework would all be the same, but everything would be uniquely you. All right? So I'm giving you permission, and I will stand up to your boss if you want me to, have them email me, email me that do what you like in that, take some stuff, but you need to tweak it to make it your own. Because if you're not going to be, if it's not going to feel natural to you, if it's not going to feel like a part of who you are as a teacher, you're, it's not going to last. Okay? So, permission given. Lastly, I'm going to say, have fun with this. Okay? Um, my wife, hold on. Okay. It takes a while. Does having the kids up at the board and you not telling them exactly what to do takes getting used to? Yes. Okay. Does having making sure that they're in the right groups that you posted on the board and that making sure that people are rotating markers, etc., take a little bit? Yes. But I would also say, because we've been told to do so many different things as teachers, that it brings back some of those fun, informal conversations that you would have when kids are working for 20 minutes, okay? When you're walking around, you can interact with students. You hear somebody talking, you know, maybe a group finished up and they're talking about the play, or maybe they're talking about this soccer team, or maybe they're talking about the World Cup, or other times you're walking by and you see the one student who's been struggling with stuff go through and start to go through and do the work. And you can go over and say, hey, good job. And sometimes they're the students who then start making the suggestions, and you can encourage them that way. Um, I had one student last year who, second semester comes by, they come into the classroom and start asking for help. They said, so you need some help now? And they said, yeah, um, since whenever we need help up at the boards, you give it to us, I figured it's okay and safe to come in and give you, ask for help individually. And I was like, I had never even thought about that. And it was amazing. I have wonderful conversations about you know, just informal things about how students have grown. I can praise students like at the end of the year. I'm like, oh my gosh, remember when you started here and now you're here? And they're like, yeah, it's great. And you can go through and you can have little conversations one on one. Or, I mean, there's so, it just, for me, and per, for me personally, I love that. That's why I got into teaching. Okay. And building things in classrooms, once you kind of get in the hang of it and stuff, allows you to do some of that. Plus, it's also kind of fun to come in and ask one or two questions and walk away. So those are the three things I would say try to keep in the back of your head, okay? So first of all, commit to the bit, okay? I'm going to get my kids up 10 minutes a day, three days a week, okay? Be consistent. Do it for a semester. Do it for two months, okay? It will get easier as you go. Two, find how you can make what is in the book work for you, okay? And last but not least, have some fun with it. If you're not having fun while teaching, I think you're in the wrong profession, honestly. Or you need to find a different district to work for. And our HR link is down below somewhere in here if you want. But you did you did hit subscribe, right? But over here, I will put two of my in, two of my introductory how to get started types of videos. If you want to watch those, if you already haven't done so, and I will. If I don't see you, good luck for the school year.